Hello and welcome to episode 7, season 7, with the mighty Nash, Curse and Ashton as always. Thanks for joining me, make sure you do the good stuff, you know what it is by now. Hit the thumbs up, get involved in the comments, subscribe if you're new, and hit that bell, and you'll never miss anything to do. Like, I've done a few things recently, check them out, go check them out, European Super League, I was flipped the Football League, and recently I did a video called Tall vs Small, which I had a lot of fun with that one. So go and check it out. And I've got some great news. Two bits of great news. One, when this series ends, I'll be starting the road to anywhere. It is returning. I've been doing it every year since FM19. And for the last few years, it's been me and my CCPO. What are we going to be getting up to? Could be anything. And also, I did promise, you may not have seen it, that I'm going to be giving away another game. My friend Limo gave me another copy of FM24. And I don't like to use them. I know some people use them, don't they, to try and get people in. Um, I like to use them to support the people who support me the most. And that'll be you right now watching this. If you're still watching this and you don't own FM24, you're going to have a chance to win it. I'll reveal the question for the competition, which I'll draw in episode eight later on in the episode. But for now, we've got a ton to get through. I've had a ton of fun, as always, with the Nash. So let's see what I've been doing. So we're going to start the episode here on the 12th of September because I was doing bits of business quite late um, and a few other little bits and then I forgot to save it. <laughs> so we are going to be starting on the 12th of September. So the season's already underway. You can see we're already fourth if you look at the top of the screen. Now I brought in 10 new players and it was it was quite difficult because obviously we've, we got up, up into this league. We did fantastic last year getting in the playoffs. Um, we're not really a League One club. Let's be honest, with the size of the stadium, I mean, we've only got 780 season ticket holders um, and the money ain't great and the wage budget did not change. So I had to, I let a lot of young players go. They weren't that good. But even if they're only 100 quid a week, I was trying to save up as much money as possible. Lots of players left anyway um, on freeze and I decided to freshen things up. Now, two bits of big news, starting with the first one. We finally have a new owner, Jaden Turner promotion from within now Jaden to be fair to him put a couple of hundred grand into the club but I'll be honest with you that will disappear rapid seriously well fast but you might also remember we've had a couple of senior affiliates we had Sheffield Wednesday but then I think we went up into a division so we lost it and then I got Stoke the year after they got relegated to League One so we lost that so we asked for another one and we got two options from the Premier League and in one, one way I was buzzing, Premier League teams. And in the other way, I was like, oh my God, as a Man United fan, they could not be worst options. It was Liverpool and Man City. I chose Man City. I chose Man City. Why? Because let's face it, if you all play this game, you know they mop up all the great young players. They've got tons and tons of regens. It made sense because you get players off them that are quality. But feck all, which is absolutely brilliant. But first, let's start with another loan. I brought in four loan players, I think. One of them is Matthew Bevis from Leeds. He didn't cost me nothing. I'm buzz I love them loans. Apparently, he's worth potentially 46 million quid. It, it doesn't always play that way. And Greeno, if you're watching, I'm sure you'll be happy because he's six foot pissy in five. But of course, I raided City's coffers and we brought in Michael Morris. 17 years old. Again, not costing me anything. Good value. Loads of potential. Could be quite good for us. Matthew Frost, I think he looks like a little baller. Especially for League One. Again, only 17. Loads of potential. He's come from the City Academy, though. You know, they've got great facilities. I'll give him that. Mourinho Bakari. I don't think that's bad for me. Can't impress myself. Um, it's 17 again from Manchester City. Again, loads of potential. Looks really, really, really good. Um, there's a few others I wanted, but they turned me down because we're not good enough. Even City himself said, yeah, you, yeah, you're not really at that level. That was when I was going for like 18, 19 year olds. It's like, you can have the 17 year olds if you want. I reckon they'll ball out for us, maybe. We've signed Finley McAllister, released from the greatest club with the greatest academy in the world. 23 years old, from Manchester United on a free. Like I say, if you want to know what I'm doing, because I've not spent a penny again, just go through every squad. In the Premier League and Championship, I do it every season. I look at all the young players, the contracts coming up to at the end. I scout them all, put them on a separate shortlist, and go on that shortlist, look who's actually interested in me, and then I wait and hope because sometimes if you want to sign them early, you might have to pay compo. I ain't got the money for compensation. Am I? I'm a cheapskate. We've sound young Dara. Is it Dara if you're Irish? I'm sorry, Brian. 
I can't say the Irish names, uh, released by Southampton on a free. We've got 21 year old Simon Davidson Richardson. Those double barrel names. Davidson Richardson. Calling him Rich. Um, he was released by Reading. I signed Ethan Scott um, quite early on a free and I was really struggling for left wingers. And then the City senior affiliate came through and I ended up getting two off them. Um, so he is just a freebie, released by Middlesbrough. He's okay, squad player. Paul McDaly, best of a bad bunch, 22 year old Scotsman, released by Salford. <laughs> He's not from the Premier League. But I'm saving what I think is the best till last. Ewan Kingsley, released by Liverpool. He was on loan at Wickham last year. Scored nearly a goal every other game. But he won't play him for me. Scottish in 20 and full of potential, and I think looks brilliant for League One and could hopefully team up with James Price form a formidable partnership in my 442. Don't don't tell anyone I'm playing 442 by the way. I'll never leave it down. Um I was buzzing with this one. And they're my new boys. So you really, you know everyone else. I think I went through the entire squad last time. You, you know all the other players. I pretty much rebuilt that defence last year. We've got players like Gordon Brown still as well. And Joe Knight, Nick Shaw still in the middle. Javen Beatty, obviously Mr Price himself. Um, he was now only a three star, but he, he has scored a lot of goals for us. He's a good player for us. Let's let's be honest. Um, I'll show you a couple of the good ones. Bradley Moonen, cracking player. Kerr Smith had a lot of interest, actually. I had a bid in. Was it Ipswich? I think it was Ipswich for like 2.3 million. And part of me is like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I don't need the money. Screw you. So even though we got to the playoffs last year, right? I think we did really well. I know we punched above our weight. Um, I've got a 23-man squad. Trimmed it a bit. You know what I mean? I've tr I have trimmed it. Um, I think the bookies are looking at it, saying, what, you've got a couple of loanies, they're young. You've signed a couple of ropey players, which I'll admit I have, but we've got a couple of good ones, and we've got some good ones that have stayed. I think the core of team is better than the 18th they're predicting, and we're already, as you've seen, fourth. Six games I've played at this point, I've won four, drawn one, lost one. Where's Oxford United? Can you see them? The bastards. Destroyed my playoff dreams last year, and didn't even go on and win it, and now the 21st. I haven't won a game in the first six. Seen his top goal scorer, Ewan Kingsley. I'm loving it. I love it when you find a player that you love and they just do well. Hopefully, you can keep on doing well. So let's get straight into it. It's the first of Jan, and we're just doing what we did last year, but I think a little bit better. We're sitting in third, right? Halfway through the league or the season, sorry. Um, 27 games played. I've won 13, drawn nine, lost five. I mean, we're only four points off Rotherham. Oxford United have improved. Fair play to them. I don't hate Oxford United. Just pissed me off last year. It's nice at Stockport are there, mid-table. Um, but again, we're being over... Is it overestimated? Underestimated. I've had a long day. I've been up since this... I've been up since the crack of dawn. My wife's pissed off to Ireland. I had to get the kids up. Get to my mother's, get to work, do my first half of work, rush home, eat, tidy up, get down to this, make this, edit this, render it, get it on YouTube, uploaded it, go back to work, hope you watch it. That's my life, man. So life in League One, here we go. Started off very well, beating Rotherham, drawing with Oxford. Oh, it's always a battle. I'm um, going on a good run, patchy run, and good one recently. Drawing a few this year, but we've not been beaten since the 17th, oh no, sorry, the 10th of November. Ignored the game before. I've forgotten about it. I've, I've, I've removed it from my mind. Crawler. Christ. So this is a squad arranged by average rating. Um, the two left wingers obviously sharing that job quite a lot. Um, from City, Morris and Bakari. But fantastic when they play. Matthew Frost, the midfielder from City, done really well. Um, Callum Osmond. Callum Osmond picked him up last year. Obviously, he's playing a bit more, is he? Yeah, done all right, hasn't he? Um, pricey. Wants a new contract, right? He wanted one all season. I've had three, I think I had three attempts during the season to um, sort that out. And he wants like six grand a week. The max I can offer is two and a half. So, I mean, pricey, mate. And his contract runs out in 31. He's, God, oh, Jesus, following season. I think we're getting six grand a week. What are you talking about? We're cruising Ashton, mate. So I, I ain't had the thought of it. Might have to cash in. 
on him. Uh, Ewan Kingsley, the young lad. Decent, isn't he? I think he's decent. Um, Ethan Scott, bit of a sub player. But as a team, again, the league does not lie. And we are sitting third and we're in with a great chance if we can just keep this kind of football up, this kind of form. Don't get massive injuries. We've done quite, we did quite well at this point with all that kind of stuff. Might have a playoff drama again. But right, I'm jumping forward to the 1st of March again. And we're still third. I think, was it like this last year? We would have stayed fourth all season. But we're not far off. I mean, forget Rotherham. They're starting to get a bit of distance. But Reading's only three points. But we level with Stoke, our old senior affiliate. Look at us now, eh? Look at us now. Toted so. Um, so, yeah, again, it's still, it was going great. Into the new year. And we've gone back to not liking to draw. We've also had some right stinkers. Some games where they're just like, nah, we're not into this today. They're probably down the pub. Marcus Rashford, a nice out in Belfast. I mean, look at Bradford City there. We still scored four. They got four, two. Yay, we'll score four again. But we're letting seven this time. Couple of Dickens right there. And then the last two games at this point, Crawley 6 nil, Forest Green 4 nil. I don't know, sometimes I, don't, I just play and see what happens. I don't go into a lot of these games thinking, guaranteed this. Even do not even matter where they are in the league, anything can happen. Papa John's was shit. Carabao Cup. We got to the third round. Huddersfield Bradford. See you later. And we got our senior affiliate, Manchester City. And I was hoping, you know what? You don't need any Carabao Cups. There was a favour with homies now, aren't we? We've got connections, deep connections. And um, put our B team, power your kids. No, we got battered. FA Cup though, we're buzzing with this. Cracking little run, this. Chesterfield, and I was like, oh shit, here we go. Uh, and then, gripping game, extra time, brilliant. Stoke, our old senior affiliate, battered him. And the next one's for Greeno, mate. My friend Greeno, who I'm going to be highlighting one of his new databases very soon. I'll be filming it in a couple of days. It should be out maybe on Friday after the release of this video. And. Um, He's a Blackburn fan, so there you go, Greeno. That did that for you as a thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a good mood today. Uh, and then Liverpool, obviously, give us one. But it's Liverpool, so FA Cup 4th round is bloody fantastic. A quick look at the old squad, arranged by average rating. Um, yeah, Ewan Kingsley, 29 goals. He's been great. Uh, Jamesy Price still wants £15 million a week. He needs to go to Saudi Arabia for the money you're asking, mate. No chance. Um, but again, you know, the two lads from City have been great. Even Frosty might have a seven, but he's done really good. Let's just go down. I play him a lot because he's got the ability. Right? But he's, he's not really amazing. All six foot five of him. I bet you he'd be a baller if he was four foot eleven. I put money on it, he'd be twice a player. 40 odd million he's supposed to be worth. It's just not feeling it here in Ashton, is it? Now, I've not shown you you've been sakes for a while because they're usually like this. And that's what I'm, I've just been signing quite a lot of them over the last few years. Um, might be 100 quid a week, whatever. And that's why I let a load of them go. Even if it is just 100 pound a week, I really need to sort that weed budget out because it didn't really increase it for me. Um, and obviously players want pay rises. I'm trying to get some quality in. Obviously, I've got bloody, what, four players I'm not paying anything for to flesh out this squad. That's where we're at. We're really at a hitting the wall really with that without any major investment or major money um, that's probably why I should have sold Kerr Smith for 2.3 million pounds to Ipswich but I didn't want to so with four games left to play in the league we're back in fourth on 75 points but we're well ahead of QPR and we are going toe to toe now with Stoke and Reading who are on 76 and we are a little bit sketchy at times I think I've played five games there since I last showed you um, three wins two losses Oxford United at home again it's it's mad isn't it how, this, how you have these little weird things within the game um, but yeah Reading in second next huge game but crew in 20th Stockport County Scarf My Father War I love that club uh, and then Bristol Rovers are in 22nd now I've played a few of these games um, are we going to get our mighty promotion are we going to be in the playoffs battling it out do you want to know? Are you sure? Well, I beat Reading away from home, who I'd say were a touch better than us. A touch. Look at that game, by the way. Insane game. 
But who cares? Three points to us. We then drew with Crew Alexander. Pretty equal game again. Pretty fair result. And then battered at the beautiful edge of the park, Stockport County. I didn't, again, if you look at the stats, I didn't bar him. It was equal, but we just scored three. They had one disallowed in the 93rd minute. Great performance from us. Picking up a bit of form now. One game to go, though, which I haven't played because we are currently sitting in second. That Reading game was massive, like massive. We're on 82 points, Stoke 81, um, Reading 79. So it's still all to play for, all to play for. We've got Bristol Rovers, remember, who were 22nd last time we looked. They're now 23rd and have a new manager, someone from back in my day. They only appointed him recently, Olaf Nelberg. 52, he's a lot older than me, though. But he was about when I was young and watched way more football than I do now, which is pretty much zero. I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, the old Aston Villa player. He did play for Aston Villa, didn't he? He did, didn't he? He did. He did, didn't he? Yeah. For seven years. And then he went to Juventus. I don't remember that. Getting old. But anyway, so we're at home against Olaf Melberg and his new Bristol Rovers team, Stoke. I've seen somewhere there at home to Bradford City. It was down there in 20th, fighting to survive. So that could be a good thing for us. And then we've got Reading, who are away to QPR. And they're battling out. They're neck and neck with each other, both secure playoffs. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Squad-wise, I've got a couple of players tied. Nick Shaw, but he's a bit more of a sub player anyway. Uh, Matthew Frost, Frost, Frost. He would have started. Fitness issues, we'll see. Uh, Carmack Daly, I'm not bothered with really. So I can put out, hopefully, a side here that can take us up. No playoff drama, hopefully. Now, I don't always show you the page when I've picked my team, um, but I'm quite happy with this team, you know, to be fair. When you actually look at it, we've got some quality, especially someone like Ryan Jones, who was signed last year in a free. I think he's really got, he's got a lot better this year. He's on the right. We all know who Joe Knight is. He's been great for me. McAllister's the new boy from United, so he's obviously great. But Gary, the City winger, my strikers, I think are good and have goals in them. Uh, the keepers now, he's been here ages, and he's a pole. I think he's got better. Good little keeper, he's still only 23. Got Laidlaw at left back, good solid player. Gordon Brown, decent. Um, 46 million pound man. Mr. Matthew Bevis apparently is now a. <laughs> We've done that. We've done that to him. He's now potentially worth £62 million. Uh, and then we've got Mr. Smith, Kerr Smith. Still here. Um, at right back. I felt good about that team. Welcome to the Tame Side Stadium. You know my team. I've showed it you already. I'm in a good mood today. I'm getting close to my long weekend, so I'm hoping episode eight, I should get out pretty quick because I'll have plenty of time to play it. I've um, got a lot on this weekend. I've got lots of content to make. Um, and I'm doing another match day vlog at FC United of Manchester on Saturday. So I'm excited about that. But this is huge for the Nash. So then the FM24 game giveaway. If you want to enter, check the description of this video. You'll find my email address. Um, you have to email me the answer. Now the question is, who scored the third goal? in the 3-2 victory in the first leg of the semi-final of the playoffs against Oxford United in episode six. What's his full name? He scored the third goal and gave us hope. I'm really letting goals in here. Um, that's it. That's and um, Email me, give me your answer. And title the email though, FM24 giveaway. So don't lose it. I can just search for it and I can find it. Um, and then in episode eight, I'll do a draw, or my young son will do the draw again. He enjoyed that last time. Um, and I'll give one of you a copy. I know it's been out a while, this game. I know a lot of people still don't have it. Um, and I want to reward you guys who are still watching me content deep into something, not just use it as a tool to, you know, try and get people in. I know people do that. I get it. I've done it, I've done it myself years ago. Um, you hope people will come to your channel. <laughs> but I'd rather give it to you guys like I did with the other copy on the subscriber league. You know, the people that really support me. Um, yeah, so thanks. But anyway, here we go. Kingsley. Down the left-hand side. Come on, boys. Come on. We're better than this. I'm not feeling this already. You're 27 minutes in. The fuck all's happened. There's Laid Law. Laying down the law. Crosses it in. Jonesy! Ryan Jones highlighted the kid. And he's showing you what he's all about. Well done. He's doing the robot. He's doing the robot. 
so yeah the road to anywhere is returning and um, i'm going to because the first two series i did on 19 and 20 were just normal journeymen just me like this going on a journeyman manager story but then on fm 21 22 23 i've made it more interactive a story with characters and drama and it's got a bit crazy and the story's gone in there ooh, and everywhere um, and if you followed it you probably remember most of it you'll know certain characters who've come and gone and been killed you'll know who my ccpo is which is basically you i talk to the camera like it's me and you on the adventure and um, you're my ccpo that's the whole premise of it um, which is a chief, chief cone placement officer <laughs> um, and it's, it's been bonkers but I think what I'm going to do because I'm off this weekend is build a montage so episode one will be like a quick recap of the story like quick fire hopefully so you can just watch that and go right that's what happened you crazy bastard <laughs> I remember now I know where we're up to or if you've never seen the series get in Mr. Bakari Bakari oh Bakari when you move like that love it or if you've never seen the series you don't have to watch them all even though they are quite good and if you watch the stories in full because there's always a clip at the beginning and a clip at the end the, the effort we've put in I mean last year was hard work I, I nearly burnt out um, I had Greeno was a main character before he got blew up and killed finally at the end spoilers um, he nearly burnt out it's tough you know what I mean but it's, it is still fun so I've figured out a way to bring it back if you watch the end of the last se series you'll think how boo how booed getting out of this one don't worry we'll be fine um and i'm gonna go another adventure with ccpo with shenanigans probably a new baddie i don't know hopefully you enjoy it but for now it's half time and i mean it's not been the greatest game but we scored two decent goals the wingers on fire we could be going up here to championship. Okay, second half, I've made no changes. Uh, one thing I will say is I, I'm really enjoying playing this, but it's a time thing. I, I don't know that this ain't going to be a Premier League, Champions League story. Um, I think I've got an, an end idea in mind coming soon. It's been a great, it's been great fun, um, but I really want to, I really want to go into the road to anywhere now. I'll be completely honest, even though I'm still loving this, definitely doing next season, possibly one after, um, and we'll see what happens. Because I, 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 if we do go up here, we're gonna be a championship. And if they don't release more wages, I'm I'm screwed, man. I'll be screwed in a championship. Playing teams, there'll be teams that have got relegated with players who are on, are on a week more than my entire squad. The difference is going to be so big. Maybe it's finally going to be what I've always dreamed of. A relegation battle. I would love this to be a last game of the season, not to go up. It's part, I've always wanted that drama and I never get there and I'm not going to play shit just to be rubbish to get that. But one day it's got to happen where it's the last game of the season. I've got to win or we get relegated. Oh, how fun would that be? That might happen next year. So stay tuned, don't go missing. Um, if you haven't watched Tall vs. Small, by the way, it's a video I brought out recently. Check it out. I made a team of four foot 11s. Same players on both teams, but the other team have got six foot 11s. Very interesting and not very scientific or serious some people take it serious it's, it wasn't um, but go and check that out go and check it all out but thanks for watching this and here we go Bakari let me take this and I'm going to make some changes oh took a deflection get in 3-0 job done I mean this is more like it although we've got a highlight from kickoff so yeah I've made two changes um, definitely Moonen's come on at centre half for the £64 million pound man um, Frost has come on for McAllister I think yeah give him a run out he's been great for me all the City boys have been good but that link with City oof, won't go away because they're Premier League I'm not going to lose that this year I'm going to get to keep it and hopefully when we do go to Championship they might say oh you're Championship now I might get some of the 18, 19 year olds that are very good I might be able to really basically turn myself into Man oh god that's bad when I say it out loud turn myself into Man City B that'd be good they've got the players I don't care where they're from what a performance though could not be happier not making any more changes no I'm leaving it 3-0 at the same size stadium no playoff drama although it can be fun much much easier episode for me to make and edit do you know what I mean my wife's in Ireland my oldest is sleeping at his grandma's my youngest is sleeping at his nana's I've got the house to myself I get the lube out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm talking to a guy at work the other day, he's like 65, right? 
his wife's ill in hospital and he's got a VR headset and he's been playing all the games and then he's realised his mate hacked it from him. I don't know how you do it, I've not got one. But getting access to the porn sites. He's been knocking one out openly telling me. But the VR headset on watching VR porn. Where it's, it says honestly, oh, was that for, was that the long highlight from kickoff? Didn't stop, did it? I might see him on some websites, but he's saying like, when you've got this headset on, it's like you're there, it's like they're all over you, it's like they're here, there, and you're looking around. And all I could think about was his old ass with his three teeth on his couch with a headset on. You know what I mean? Because uh -huh. that's, that's, that's the reality of it, isn't it? Crazy. <laughs> what's, the, what's the world coming to? Here's pricing now, charging on the right hand side. Go on, kiddo. Go on. It's so little, isn't it? Green will hate him. He's too small for him. He loves, him like, he lo he loves men big, thick, girthy, and long and strong. Right, well into injury time, got seven minutes of it, it's 3-1. And I prefer the clean sheet. Both had the same amount of shots, to be fair, we've been a better team. We deserve this. The league does not lie, and the league has us in second, automatically promoted with 85 points, one more point. Van Stoke, check that out, Oxford didn't even make the playoffs this year, that's disappointing. They've gone backwards, we've gone forwards. Where, where have we got that budget from? I had no money. But they're gonna give me 867 grand and 50. I mean, that's still not a lot. But to us, that's like doubling my weekly wage budget and giving me a right chunk of change. Like I said, we haven't actually got any money. I mean, they took two loans out in the past, we're paying them off. And any money he put in didn't touch the sides. But he's gonna gamble on me and gamble on this club. And that is massive. So I've got 20 grand already in the wages to spend. And the, that is a lot of money for me. I can't believe I'm having tingles in my nutsack over £867,688. So jump forward a little bit to the 1st of June. Let's have a look at who's going where. So Reading won the playoffs. They're coming up with us in Rotherham. Well, Green won't like that one. Blackburn finished above Burnley, but Burnley won the playoffs. Ouch. Um, so who's coming down? Whose place are we taking? Swansea, Salford and Peterborough. Well, Luton, a Prem team, that's debatable. But Forest, Sheffield United, these are decent clubs. They're going to have big players and a lot more money than my entire squad. Best thing about that, though, is City finishing seventh for Manchester United. Winning the league. Rasmus Hoyland, you better start scoring 22 goals a season, mate. Well, there we go. That is the end of episode seven, season seven. As always, thanks for joining me. Thanks for sticking with me and the Nash on this journey. If you enjoyed it, the thumbs up, get involved in the comments. It does help. I always catch up on my comments eventually. Um, subscribe if you do and hit that bell and you'll never miss anything I do. Like I said, I've got a database review of one of Greeno's. It's Scotland coming out on Friday, hopefully. It's a really good idea. Can't wait to share it. Um, and keep your eye out because the Road to Anywhere will be returning in a few weeks and uh, the madness will continue. Yeah, and don't, and, and just a reminder if you want to enter the competition to win a copy of FM24, check the description, you'll find my email address, email me, title that email, FM24 giveaway or game giveaway. Um, and the question is who scored? the third goal in the 3-2 victory over Oxford United in the first leg of the semi-finals in League One in episode six, the last episode. Who scored the third goal? Full name, please. Um, and my son, Fletcher, will draw the winner at the beginning of episode eight. So it's always, thank you. Don't go missing. I love you long time, you sexy beast. I'm booed. Bye-bye.